So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through this one AI project. Yes, one AI project. This this only this one, this this single one. How this one project open the doors for me to start working for a startup and not only that they offered me a cto position that's crazy like not only as i'm working for my first tech startup i'm offered a cto position as well so we're going to do a demo of the actual program we're going to go through a walkthrough as well and i'm going to show you how i implemented open ai into the mix and show the functionality of it within my actual program if you don't know me and if you're new to the channel my name is dominant mac i have been in the it space for 13 years from system administration learning cybersecurity, self-taught web developer now i run an an AI agency called Mach 10 AI and Web, where we take speed and AI and deliver excellence to small businesses. My goal is to bridge the gap between small businesses and AI and automation, and hopefully to make it easier for them to understand and how it is very, very important to implement it within their business. Now, with that out of the way, let's get to it. So we're gonna start off with a demo. Let's go ahead and get this puppy running. Oh, I already got it running. So the name of my project, my, my AI project, it's called Insight. Insight is an IT asset management system um, that I created in order to solve a problem for my previous position as a system administrator for a logistics company. Dealing with multiple clients across the US and Canada, they were having trouble keeping tabs on IT devices, especially during startups. So basically a typical startup would be they get client acquisition basically as a logistics as a service right they provide all the logistics services for them in charge of setting up the infrastructure so basically managing contractors training staff assisting my my co-workers during their trainings you know training them on warehouse management systems so they'll go out to these sites and sometimes they'll leave devices that they brought from other warehouses because they'll get people from other warehouses to train people at the new warehouse especially if it's from the same company enough about that we're going to go into the actual program so admin so here that we have the actual dashboard for the admin so the admin you have two types of accounts you have an admin account and then you have a restricted account admin account is where you can see everything so you have a all a bird's eye view of all the devices that are logged into this actual application then you have custom dashboard or restricted view where it's only restricted to say for operations manager my, uh, managing his own warehouse so you're only going to have access to his own it assets right so yeah as you can see i got categories overall count i can give you the device location and software locations where they're being used i got you list of sites purchase devices assign users so you know which users assigned to which device device expiration warranties and then i got recently added so whoever comes into the program and add a new device you'll know who added and when they're added and what time they added. Um, up here, like you have these right here showing the number of hardware, software, employees, and sites are in the program. Warehouses, so since it's the admin uh, portal, you can literally see all the warehouses that have been implemented. So if you go into one of them, you can come in here and be like, oh, there's no asset. Let me give you one that has assets in it, so Starbucks. So this one you see you have all your assets right here, hardware and software below. Um, you can add software, delete, add, add and add, uh, add software, add devices. You can download a CSV file of all your devices. Right now they have it for just the hardware, and then you can download all the barcodes for your hardware as well. Um, I will, later on I'm gonna put uh, functionality where you download barcodes, you put them on your devices, and then I want you to be able to scan it when you do an audit and it'll be recognized in the actual program to say oh this is at this location or no it's not at this location it's somewhere else um yeah you can download barcodes um change the make the maintenance status or the status of the actual device if it's active um, decommissioned or whatever that's about it um i have pagination so you i think it shows like maybe what 10 devices per page so same thing with you know so device i do have filters so like you can filter your devices to see which ones are active see which ones have you know the warranty by you're going to do by name location active and type and assign to um so like for example give me all the laptops filter laptops give me all the desktops filter give me all the mobile phones filter you know what i'm saying so or any type filter you know 
filter functionality for both excuse me software and hardware and now to the good part the assistant so I implemented AI into this program just because when I were when I was working for this company it was just only me and an, um, another co-worker of mine and we were the only tier three um, administrators help desk whatever like we wore many hats in this I wore many hats in this position me and him uh, when it came to going to different sites doing startups projects it could be a startup project it can be a project implementing um, SD WAN um, a project dealing with a new software that they um, they're trying to use for their warehouse um, change management changing out access points scanners printers whatever we become so busy that when we have these smaller calls like hey our printer zebra printer is not working or laptop is not working or this or whatever um, and sometimes, and I ain't gonna lie, man, the IT help desk that we had at our, at our company, they, they're not trash. They were just slow and not readily available. They, they weren't really accessible, right? So they will always call us if they had our number or reach us out on our email. And I couldn't really just drop everything because I was probably busy with doing a wireless sur site survey or I was busy working on a project you know putting up new PCs um, assisting contractors and um, putting up routers and switches configuring routers and switches like you know working with networking engineers and you know it, it got to a point where it was just too much so I was like well if I add AI functionality to this maybe they can troubleshoot the problem themselves and then if they have done as much as they can they can feel good that they know you know they have a sense of confidence knowing that they can actually troubleshoot this stuff and at the same time if the device is not fixed they know they went through the steps to try to try to fix it themselves and it also helps me and my coworker out because now we know where to start off we don't have to start from ground zero we can start from whatever step they you know whatever steps they did we can go from there and do some advanced troubleshooting so here I have a general text with uh, general text with open AI so basically it's a help desk so if you put in hey it's a help desk IT assist, help desk assistant right so how can I assist you today so basically I can put in saying um, having trouble with was a zebra zebra mobile printer let's see because I'm things be getting on my nerves I'm not gonna lie So right here, I can help you with that. To better assist you, you could, please, could you please provide me more details about the issue you're experiencing with your Zebra mobile printer? Here are some questions that might narrow it down. So it can tell you the model. See, it's asking for the model, connection, is it symptoms, whatever. And you can go into detail, asking like, okay, this is this, this is this, whatever, whatever. And it'll spit, like, it gives suggestions towards the issue, right? Now, my other part, and I'm going to back out of this. I'm still working on the function of, like, reloading it um like you know once i clear it say i'm gonna have to do a clear button like clear it and whatever but anyway um this one is the one that looks into the database so it will look into the database and see that um oh these are the devices you already have if you already have problems with the device okay let's spin up a maintenance guide for you so i know one thing they have trouble with the dell optiplex uh, well the dell desktops I know a 310 if you into computer a 310 is old as shit I had that as a server in my other room like that, that them things are old as hell right I have one what well, is both the server and it's um it has uh what I try to put on there VMware I probably put v VMware like XE so I can have multiple VMs at the same time and everything you know try to do is like a you know multiple servers and stuff like that anyway so yeah so it spits out this guide maintenance guide for Dell Optiplex 310 it'll tell you the type of the desktop and then it'll go through the actual daily checks disk space monthly checks cleaning guide internal cleaning external cleaning common issues and troubleshooting tips recommended tools and materials for the maintenance and safety precautions and proper ventilation and avoid liquid like it gives you a whole guide on how to make sure you maintaining your device depending like within your database right Basically, I go from the database. Um, it gives me a list, a drop-down list, as you saw, 
of all the devices in the actual database and then AI or uh, open AI would take that take it as a um, variable right the selected name and then it will go and say oh, okay you know of course it's gonna go and do its thing um, and then give you the guide give you the exact guide to follow not exact but like a, a simple guide to where you can do your maintenance with that certain device um, so in the back end I've used open AI to do it so this is the actual code you know um, as you can see I'm using Django Django the web framework I work with Python I love Python so then I got when I got into web development and then I wanted to create websites I was like how in the world I could create websites oh I could use Python so I like Python just because is um, the community is very big in Python a lot of applications have been made up of a type of Python like Instagram you know I, which that blew my mind I was like wow Instagram is built on top of Python so I'm, I'm assuming Python a rest framework using the react front end because of course Instagram is with meta Facebook and you know they created react so I'm assuming no not I'm guarantee I'm 99% sure they're using react front end Django back end so yeah so you can see this is from the first prompt this is the actual prompt I'm using for the general um, prompting um, form right so ask a question give you the issues and the response here and then for the second one I had to do some tweaking to it so first you can see the actual prompt this is the prompt I gave it so a little bit of prompt engineering getting more into AI so I figured you know um, learning how to be a better prompt engineer um, just like being a, a software developer dude you just got to know how to con how to manipulate things and how certain things are used a certain functions methods packages are used right uh, so yeah, so I, once I, I generate the prompt and then the problem I had was when it was generating similar to the first one you seen when it was just all jumbled together, I I didn't want the guy to be all generated all block text. I want it to be like, as you saw, like sectioned off. So I had to create a function to basically split it by the new line, line comprehension right here, split it by the new line by the new line character and then remove any empty lines. And then, yeah, from that point on, um, once I get the split guide and the asset, then it is sent, and then I also get the asset as well. So it's bringing all the assets from the database. And then once it does that, then it gives me the selected and split guides. Um, this is where you get the I, the, I, the asset ID. So long, if it had, if it's an asset that has an ID and it's selected within the list, then it's going to go ahead and generate the guide. And then I'm able to send it to the front end to the uh, HTML template, which here, um, yeah, don't be overwhelmed by all this. A lot of Tailwind CSS, um, and I don't mind it because I rather do Tailwind than to use regular CSS at this point. Because the more I've been using on Tailwind, it's way easier. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, it looks good. So forms so this is the first form this is the one for the general generating response for the regular generate text open AI which I should change that to like extra you know ITS IT assistant help desk assistant and then this is the second form that actually does the maintenance guide for you again um, as you saw in the right here these this dictionary is sent so you have it's gonna render the request and it's gonna render uh, whatever request that you're gonna do like a get post right and it's gonna sit and not sit it's gonna um, go to this HTML template which you find under my templates folder down here right so it's gonna basically okay this is the form I want to send all this information to this Python dictionary to and you're gonna end up using these keys so basically the values are what we got from the actual business not uh, business on um, Business knowledge, not business. Um, oh wow, and I forgot what the uh, business logic from the business logic here, and it's going to be assigned to these keys here, which now you can use them on here in the front end on the template. So, like asset name, um, you can use the response key right here. Um, asset select the asset type name here, select the asset name here, you know, so you can start using these these keys within the front end um, and the way it's been used is using Jinja right Jinja I think it's Jinja 2 yeah Jinja 2 so it's a templating um, language basically that that enables you to use 
um, bring in the business logic variables or the that the, the the information the data to the front end for you to manipulate and to show on the actual website and then I still I just have some simple JavaScript that shows the loading indicator that's all uh, I'm very proud of this man like didn't know I can actually try to build something out like this um, yeah man I'm just and the thing about it like showing this program to the people at the startup like in the, in the the crazy thing about it I met them at a tech it was a tech meet just a bunch of tech people people that had been in the tech technology industry for a while and it, I just happened to sit at a picnic table working on the same project and he saw it he asked me questions about it he was like oh wow this is what we're trying to do and what what we're trying to create are do you, are you interested in doing helping us out and I was like sure and then I got the, you know, start working with them and everything. And then they offered me to be a CTO, but I had to decline um, at the time because, you know, a lot of startups, you know, they don't have a lot of cap. Well, they don't have capital at all. Some of the startups don't even start with capital. They trying to get VC capital, and and that's the old school way of doing things. And I, I and I, I, at the time, I didn't have a job, and I wasn't waiting for them to, you know, pay me. And I've been working with them for three and a half months. And I was like, hey, man, I got to, you know, uh, my priorities, you know, uh, I, I got responsibilities. But anyway, I'm still I'm still ecstatic that I even was offered the chance and even offered the position. Um, I was it was very grateful. I was very, very grateful for them bringing me on. I was very grateful for them offering me that. I was very grateful for what I've learned during that time. Um, and I just hope. That this is inspiration for you, especially if you're getting to AI, that um, that you just keep on going because you you never know who's looking at, looking at you, you never know who's out there observing you and seeing what you can do. Because again, like it was just sitting down working on it, and I got discovered, and bam, you know, and it's just giving me the confidence to just do more, and and now give me the confidence to start to get into AI even more and start an agency to actually showcase my skills both in web development and AI and see if I can mesh that together and to see if I can bring other people on, you know, to see if I can actually get other people um, to understand what AI can do for them, especially for small businesses, how they can, you know, use this to streamline their workflows flawlessly, you know, um, being able to help other startups, you know, using AI. So they don't have to have you don't have to have a receptionist or HR and all that. You can have AI agents actually working on your behalf and it could become that and you don't have to worry about paying other people at the time you know you don't have to worry about the startup capital just pay a 50 50 dollars you know for the program that you're going to create right or the platform that you're going to use to create your ai agent or create your ai your automation tool right and then go from there you know so i hope you found this video valuable uh, again, I am I'm so happy to share this with you like this is this is a video that been on my mind for a while And I really want to put it out there and I'm glad I put it out there for y'all to see um, I hope this gives you the confidence to continue building um, That if somebody else can, if I can do it if somebody else can do it you can do it dude and um, I'm grateful for you lasting this long in the video if you find this video valuable, please subscribe down below um like and like this like and comment if you have any questions if you have any um story that you would like to share with me about your journey as i wanted to bridge that gap putting ai into your business just simply using it for everyday use you know so again like subscribe till next time see you in the next video